Hi, this is Jay Fallon, and welcome to TeachMeToCode.com. Today's screencast, we're going to be talking about LESS, which is a Ruby gem that compiles LESS code into CSS. Um, it also extends CSS with the use of variables, mixins, operations, and nested rules. The good part about LESS is that you don't have to learn any new syntax. It simply uses CSS. And the main benefit that I've found from it is it allows me to have more control over my code by nesting uh, my classes and my ID divs within uh, their parents in the same way in which they appear in the HTML page. So to install less, you simply use the command line gem install less. I've already done that, so I'm not going to bore you with that part. And to compile the less files into CSS, you simply use uh, the following command in your command line less c, and then the file, this less file that you're intend to compile into CSS. So let's go ahead and get started. I've created a basic uh, operate, uh, framework for today. We're just going to be doing a simple uh, file, simple HTML file that's going to look somewhat like Twitter does. And it's based off of uh, Eric Berry's creating a Twitter clone in Rails uh, series that he has on Teach Me to Code. It's a really cool series. I suggest you check it out. And to help me out a little bit, I'm using uh, the Yahoo's UI library. I'm using number three. And from there, I've downloaded a couple of the CSS files, which are Reset Minify, Fonts Minify, and I'm also using my clearfix.css file, which I use to suppress the guillotine bug. Um, present in a lot of browsers. The reason I use it is I use a lot of floats and sometimes overflow auto doesn't cover, um, doesn't fix everything for me so I'm going to use that. I've also created a empty application.less file and an empty application.css file. So I'm going to walk you through some of the um, things that you can do with less start off let's look at the docs and I'm going to start with the part that's uh, importing so what I'm going to do, go ahead and do is I'm going to import all my CSS files into one and we'll start with reset minify.css fonts.min slash min CSS and we'll also import our clearfix file. If you didn't state that the file was CSS and you just wanted an LSS file to be imported in it, you just uh, leave that uh, just put the file name and leave the appendage blank. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And now in uh, the command line, I simply do less c application dot less and the file I wanted to compile to the application dot css. Let's go ahead and see if that worked. And if we look into application dot css, we see that it's imported all the elements and classes from uh, three other files. So we have our, our reset, we have our fonts, and we have our clear fix as well. All right. So the main purpose here is that you can share this LSS file or LS file across uh, with other developers and you don't have to touch the application.css file. That's one thing you don't need to do. So we'll just add the comments in there. You can just add inline comments or C style comments as well. And I'll just put imports. Okay. Form. And now we'll start to um, just add a basic body tag and background. We'll just use white for the moment. Okay. 
And now I'm going to set up the Let's compile it to actually watch things. And just by adding watch, it'll keep an eye on all the changes I make into my less file and compile them into my CSS file. And it'll also let me know if I made any errors, which if you've ever coded with me, you'll know I do a lot. All right. So just going to wait there. Let's go ahead and create a basic index file. And we're going to write this all out. Okay. I'm going to call this flitter, like Eric Berry did. And we're going to add our link to our application.css file. Start with the body, and basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create, um, I'm going to separate things between the, the top and the bottom uh, by applying two wrappers. Then I'm going to create the header. I'm going to create the content area, and I'll create the footer as well. For right now, I'll just use a placeholder for the footer, and I'll get to that later. So let's start coding here. Top wrapper and bottom wrapper. The bottom wrapper is only going to have the footer in it, so I'll just take care of that real quick. And this is the footer. All right. So going back to the top wrapper, we'll create the header. And we'll create the content. Within the header, I'm going to have two divs, one for left and right. Header left. And header right. And the content, I'm going to do the same thing. Content left. I have to type with my laptop keyboard today because the front room of the house makes a lot of noise. And I don't have my keyboard here in the back. All right, so that's all good. Save that out. Now for the header, we're going to put the logo in there, and we'll call it Flitter. Well, first we'll move. heading one, we'll call that Flitter. Um, we're just going to set this to the absolute path. Um, give it a link. I already did that. And we're going to wrap that with a span tag. And I'll, later on in this little series, I'll show you why I do that. Next, I go to the header right, and we're going to create the nav. Main nav. And I don't like the way Twitter does their search. They have that uh, find people uh, buried there in the nav, so I'm going to call that out. Um, just a global search. Okay, and we'll do the nav here. We'll start it off with an unordered list. And we've got home. We have profile. Uh, I'm not going to use the find people. We have settings, which actually the settings could go in the profile. Help and sign out. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and add links to these guys. We'll just set them all there for now. 
Um, and then we'll wrap the link list items. There we go. In the search, we'll have a basic form. And I don't know why TextMate does that, but we always have a lot of room in there. I'm not going to use a label for now. And I'll just have this, this text. And we'll do search here. That should be good. All right, let's take a look at this guy. So basically we have header, main nav, search, footer. Let's add some content here to our content left, just so we know where it's at. And a little bit more content right as well. All right, looks good. So now let's go back to application LSS. Okay, so as I was talking about the nested part, that's the uh, um, part I like using best. Um, I find myself on many occasions using uh, CSS files with uh, a couple thousand lines of code in it. And if you've ever done that, if working with various other developers, you know that somebody makes a change somewhere, could apply those changes site-wide, and they don't always work out the way they should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the CSS in the less file to mimic the exact way that it's written out into the HTML file that we just created. So let's start with Top wrapper, just like we did before. Hey, where are we going here? Our bottom wrapper, and here we have a header. Within the header, we have our logo div. No, nope, wait, we have header left. Uh, the TextMate bundle for less doesn't really work that great. Um, so we have header left. Then header left, we have our logo div. For the logo, we have our heading one. Within the heading one, we have our anchor tag. And within the anchor tag, we have a span. So the way I've written that out, it's going to mimic exactly the way it works right here. So here we have top wrapper, header, header left, logo, heading one, anchor tag, spam. All right. That's how that's going to work out. Um, now we'll go to the header right. And within header right, we have our main nav. Within main nav, we have our unordered list, and within the order list, we have our list items, within which we have our anchor tags, and after the main nav, we have our main search, and within main search, we have two input elements, but we're not really going to play with those today. So there you have it. Within the bottom wrapper, I have the footer. And within the footer, we're going to go ahead and size this out right now. I'm going to do the width of the page to be 1,000. And I'm going to line it in the middle. 
for now. Um, that should be good. There we go. So the footer, we have him aligned in the center. So check our application.css so we can see that the bottom wrapper footer has been created. Uh, the body tag is also in there. And that's the basic setup. So I'm going to take a break here and we'll follow up with part two of this. And I'll show you how I'm going to create the header later on, go through the content. Actually, I should do the content right now. Um, just to set up, actually. And content left. Don't have anything in there yet. And content right. All right, so thanks for watching this part. I'll be back shortly with part two of our less screencast. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, It though. could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. Oh, terrible. Get him away. Ah.